Hi, I'm Scott Haney and I'm going to talk a little bit about 72 hour kits. Some people call them bug out bags. These are some general ideas. Everybody's going to be different what they can carry, what they need, but these are some general ideas that I've uh, gathered up over the years and based on my experiences in the infantry as backpacker and as a hunter. Uh, things that help you be comfortable and stay alive if you have to leave your house for something. So uh, I'm starting off this backpack. This it can be anything. A backpack makes it easier to move if you have to move on foot with it. If you are gonna not, if you can't carry a backpack for whatever reason, and you have it in some other container like a tub or something, just you need know, to figure out a way that you can move this thing if you don't have your car available for some reason. Um, uh, one of the reasons I like a backpack uh, because the size, it, this one has several compartments. It has a uh, space for a hydration bladder so you can, you can drink on the move so you, you don't have to stop and get a canteen out. This pack has a uh, rain cover which is very high visibility so it helps protect your gear and if you need to be uh, found you can use this to get attention. Um, another idea could be something like a uh, hunter safety vest, um, maybe a, even lighter, and maybe like a vinyl one that doesn't, it's not absorbing water like this one would. So you need something to carry your gear in. Um, one of the most critical, th critical things is water. Um, this pack, like I said, has a hydration bladder in it. It carries about uh, two to three liters of water but you don't want a bladder to be your sole carrier of water. They're subject to breaking and they're not versatile. The only thing they can do is carry water for you. So this is what I have. This is the same size as a plastic Nalgene bottle. It is stainless steel. The, one of the advantages of the steel is I could put water in this and set it on the coals of a fire and it would uh, boil and it wouldn't damage the bottle at all. This one happens to be from uh, the Pathfinder. Uh, Dave Canterbury is the owner of the company. There's some other companies that make the same sort of thing. Uh, the other reason I like this one in particular, it has a very wide mouth. Do not use, whatever you do, don't use the uh, thermal or insulated bottle. You can put that in the fire and it might explode. But with the, with the water, the canteen or a water bottle, you need some sort of cup. This cup also lets you boil water, cook food, uh, mix up whatever you're doing, oatmeal or uh, freeze-dried meals or something you can use the cup for. And this kit also comes with a stand that lets you use it as a stove with your cup or your canteen. Um, you put sticks under here or, f or fuel tabs. Uh, trioxine, I think it's called. There's different types of fuel tabs that can be used with that. Um, going back to staying with the water bottles, this is called, uh, I call it, it's a Life Straw. It's a one brand of uh, emergency water treatment or purification. It's a filter. To use this, you scoop up water or bend down and get in like in a, in a puddle and you just drink through it like a straw and it, and it will uh, remove many of the harmful things, bacteria and stuff in the water. Not everything, but probably enough to help you stay alive. If you're trying to do a lot of water and you don't have some other filtration method, boiling is good. Another method is water purification tablets. Some will have a uh, aftertaste in the water, but if you need water, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna drink it no matter how bad it tastes. So not directly connected to water, but uh, we have, I have stuff for making fire and I have means of starting fire with this water in this pouch or with the water pouch so I can boil the water. And I also have a second means in here, uh, a flint and steel for uh, starting a fire. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, but this thing makes sparks. Whoa, it showed up. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I also have uh, uh, a Vic lighter in this. I don't, I, I don't think you can have too many ways of making fire. This is my metal spork. Um, it's extra long. 
if uh, I, my experience of eating out of MRE packages and backpacking meal packages, sometimes you get, you get your hand in the in the food if you don't have a long enough. So it's, this is uh, lightweight. I don't know if it's titanium. It's uh, it can be used as a fork or a spoon. But I had a plastic spork that came with this kit and just bouncing around it. I pulled it out today before this video and it was broken. So. I recommend metal. You don't have to have a spork. You could have a spoon and a fork separate as utensils, but you're gonna want something to put food in and something to eat it with besides your fingers. Okay, some, uh, this is lighting. I have a headlamp. Headlamps are very valuable. Um, Keeps your hands free of doing things and carrying carrying loads if you need to light your path. Um, so I have a, there. These are both LED bulbs. They don't they are hard to destroy the bulb itself. It won't burn out like an incandescent bulb. Um, if you're going to have battery powered devices, make sure you have extra batteries. In this case, triple A's for this and double A's for this. Uh, these are some, I haven't tested these yet, but chem lights or, uh, I don't remember what we call them chem lights in the army because that was the brand, but these things are temporary use, throw away, once you break, a, break it and show you light sticks, I guess people call them. Uh, these ones came from the dollar store and I'll be testing them maybe tonight to see how long they last. But you want to get some uh, very bright, like 12 hour ones because this, this is only basically, basically going to be used for for signaling or something if you're stranded in the dark and you need to get someone's attention. They do give off enough light very locally to see, maybe maybe even read a book, but I don't know why you'd want to use your chem lights to read the book. Uh, a compass of some sort and map, uh, map of your local area, map of the area if you, hopefully you have a plan about if you had to leave your house where you'd be going so you want maps that cover the route primary and alternate routes from where you're at to where you're going. Maybe a, a small atlas that shows a bigger picture area of the states around you or, or, or the country. Um, but know where you're going, hopefully you know where you're going ahead of time. Uh, so this is kind of like tools or equipment, duct tape. Um, I'm choosing white duct tape. Um, this kind of comes from some active shooter training I've had. Uh, if you wanted to, if you had a dark surface that your markers wouldn't write on and you needed to write on it for whatever, to, to I'd label it or whatever, if you put the white tape on there, you can write on here with a permanent marker or a pen or something and it, and it would visible. And then of course duct tape has many uses, repairing your gear, uh, medical, you can, you know, wrap a wound with it. You can use it for like mole skin on blisters. It has lots of uses. These are a couple of cheap dollar store snap links. Um, they can be help, uh, be useful when you're making a shelter or hanging gear off of your pack or whatever that you want to have ready. It's a Leatherman multi-tool. It has pliers, knife, screwdriver, and some other things on it. Um, I would stay away from the cheap Chinese made brands because they br the things break. You know, when it, if it breaks while you're using it, you could get injured, cut your hand or your finger. Uh, so if you stick with some of the name brands, maybe Schrade is a lower end, Leatherman, Gerber, there's probably some others. But probably you want to spend a little bit more money than, than the Walmart brand on the multi-tool. Um, Parachute cord, this is real parachute cord or 550 cord, called 550 because of the breaking strength is five, uh, tensile strength, 550 pounds. This is dollar store cord that is not, I've not tested it, but it's definitely not made as sturdy, but it's a lot cheaper than, than the 550 cord is. You, can't ne you can never have too many or too much parachute cord or cordage in general. Ziploc bags. Keeps your stuff dry, it helps you organize. You never know when you might need a few Ziploc bags. Um, one of the other uses you can use for a Ziploc bag is if you had a piece of paper that was not waterproof, you can write a message on the paper or a note, put it inside the Ziploc bag and leave it. 
to, uh, by a tree or on a rock or under a rock or something and if you need to leave a message for somebody. I, uh, these are reading glasses in a case to be protected. I need these for any close-up work, getting out a splinter or reading anything. Um, if you wear corrective lenses, obviously you want to have a spare. Maybe your old set that you just replaced, put them in a case and put them in your bag and leave it there. Uh, a fixed blade knife of some sort, a Mora knife is one of the good ones. This is, uh, and you want, you're looking for a knife, preferably with a, with a, uh, a solid tang, where the entire knife is one piece of metal, not just the tip of the, the back of the blade stuffed in or glued into a, a handle. So this is a solid blade knife, it's a Gerber, I uh, just bought this at Walmart today for $14 or so and not been tested yet, but it, it's a good shape. It's, it's sturdy. It looks like a sturdy knife. So you want to, you don't need a big giant Rambo knife, but you want to have at least one knife that's a, uh, that's a solid tang fixed blade knife, not just a folding knife. Um, this is a spare magazine for my handgun, which I carry all the time. I, my everyday carry is, a, is, a, is my handgun. I try to carry a spare magazine in my pockets. And I also carry a flashlight and a lighter. And I carry a folding knife. And then I carry my cell phone. And of course I have my identification or driver's license and a little bit of cash on me, debit cards, all that stuff. So uh, the more you carry all the time, obviously the better off you are, even if you can't somehow get to your, get to your kit. All right, covered water. I'm going to show some ideas for food. I've got three protein bars. They are uh, something you have to rotate out. They will not last forever. 30 grams of protein per bar, like I think 300, 200, 300 calories. In a three day, if you're, if you're designing this kit for a 72 hour or three days, very few of us actually need any type of food. It's more of a psychological thing, comfort, than anything else. Although you will, if you don't eat for three days, you're obviously going to have stomach pain. So it's good to have at least something. These were a dollar at the dollar store. They're tiny little snack cans of tuna or chicken salad with crackers. Um, I keep some of these in my, my vehicle at work if I'm stuck out on a scene somewhere and I can't get to the store to get some to eat. I, I, got, I have these. Um, these are this tuna in a foil pouch, much lighter than a, a can. Um, again, high nutrition, high protein food. Um, you're going to want to try to have stuff that takes little or no preparation. Backpacking food like freeze dried is good. Thrive, Mountain House. Uh, there's a couple other brands like REI has some of the specific stuff that's for backpacking. It may be more expensive than other places, but uh, you want some lightweight and nutritional food and stuff that doesn't, doesn't take a lot of preparation or cooking. Uh, this I keep in the top pouch of my pack. I've got my uh, bug insect repellent, bug juice I call it, some earplugs if I want to sleep in an area where there's noise. Again, some more matches and a lighter. Spare batteries for my flashlights. I have some chapstick. And I got a, I've got a whistle. If you need to get people's attention, your voice will not last very long, but you can blow a whistle as long as you can breathe. So you're, you'll lose your voice if you holler too long. I know I do. Uh, this is a bag. I need to put some more cash in, but you want to have some cash on hand that's ready to go. Uh, ones, fives, and twenties probably. You don't want to be carrying a bunch of hundred dollar bills. Uh, in case you have to buy something out there, you, you might have to pay $100 for a $5 item if you don't, you don't have change. I would say ch uh, change for a phone, 
a phone booth, but there's no such thing as a phone booth anymore. Or they're very rare. You tell me if you find one. Okay, I, I, I carry a cell phone, so I have a battery in my pack, actually fully charged, and these things should hold a charge once you fill them up. Uh, and I have a charging cord that I can plug in the wall. And this is USB output, so this is USB. So if somebody has a computer with power that I can plug into if I can't find a find a, a wall outlet. And then uh, a lot of the new cars have a USB out, outlet in, in them that you can use to charge up your phone or charge up your external battery. So. This is a, just a sheet of paper representing the contact list. So we all have our cell phones now that has names, phone numbers, sometimes email address for our friends and family. So now if somebody asks us what's their phone number or if I had to dial it from another person's phone, I, I won't remember very many phone numbers. So having the, that contact information for our friends and family, especially for ones that are outside of your area, outside the affected area that you're le leaving from is a good idea. And then important documents, things like deeds and titles, your birth certificate, uh, marriage license, credentials, if you have special, you know, special licensing for your occupation, um, family history stuff, that's more actually, probably you're gonna wanna put that on a zip drive of some kind uh, you can put a lot of pictures and documents on there, but if you have photocopies, maybe even better, some of the cop official documents have them notarized, notarized copies. Uh, and uh, one of the things I recently read about was having photos of your family members, your family group, especially children who aren't old enough to have an ID card. Uh, if, you're, if, you, if you get separated, uh, it's make it easier to, to uh, to reunite and one of the things that also for if you have kids and they're going to be out of your sight at any time you might want to have some uh, you know uh, identification with them on them a bracelet uh, dog tags something in their clothing or their backpack so you can get linked back up if something happens and you get separated from them um, Having a radio, something to get information on. Uh, you could have an AM, FM weather radio. They make some pocket sized ones. If you have one of those, you need spare batteries. Um, this is a uh, two way radio, it uh, operates on uh, amateur radio bands, also oper operates on GMRS and FRS in an emergency. It also has an FM radio, broadcast radio receiver in it, so you can listen to music or news. and. I have programmed this radio with the weather channel, the weather broadcast from the government. It's, it's a constant weather uh, broadcast. And uh, so I can listen to weather uh, forecast with this radio. Uh, I don't have it with me right now, but this radio, you can put it, uh, replace the, the regular rechargeable battery with a pack that you put AA or AAA batteries into. So I need to get uh, have additional batteries so I can to run this if I needed to. So uh, the other thing is if you ha have uh, other people in your group uh, that have radios that are compatible with this, you could communicate with them if you're close enough. And there are some repeaters, radio repeaters, that you might be able to hit depending where you're at and communicate farther through using a repeater with this radio. Oh, in this Ziploc bag I have um, some uh, writing utensils and some paper, including including a Sharpie, a big permanent marker for writing on stuff that you don't want it to wash off. Um, you can even write on, if you had to write on uh, a, someone's arm who's unconscious or something, a, a note about who, if you know who they are but they don't have ID and they send them off or somewhere. Uh, I've got some that white duct tape wrapped around the barrel of the pen because again that's one of the things you can't have too much of is duct tape. So I have a couple of ink pens, regular ink pens, and I've got some little golf pencils. Um, no eraser, just don't worry about erasing, just scratch it out. Uh, sharpen these with your knife. 
This is a small tablet. They make different sizes, but this is waterproof paper. Um, I have some regular note paper in, in this bag as well. So there's a company, this is a, this is a uh, generic one, but the main company is actually based, I think out of Seattle, called Right in the Rain. They make all kinds of paper products that are waterproof. I guess that's because they're from Seattle. All right, these are, uh, I use them for sunglasses. They're actually some shooting glasses. They're high impact. I haven't dug them out yet, but I need to get a clear pair in my bag. The reason for having clear safety glasses is if you're walking around, especially at night in the woods, you don't want your eye poked with a stick. If you're chopping on something, you don't want a, a hunk of uh, a chip of wood to fly up and get you in the eye and impair your vision. Uh, your eyes are very important anytime, but especially during an emergency. Personal hygiene, I got a toothbrush, toothpaste, um, I think I'm still lacking the floss. Hand sanitizer, uh, some roll up earplugs. If you're in a group setting and you're trying to sleep, the earplugs might come in handy uh, to help you get some rest. I got a little bit of toilet paper and um, a couple packs of wet wipes in here for wash, wiping your hands or wiping whatever part of your body you want to wipe. Uh, the wet wipes are much nicer than toilet paper and they don't fall apart and they, they, they won't get hurt if they get wet like toilet paper will. Okay, uh, medicine. I've got uh, some my uh, prescription medication that I need. I've got various over-the-counter meds. I've got antihistamine, uh, Advil. I've got uh, antacid. I've got uh, loratadine or uh, Imodium anti-diarrheal. Uh, Anyway, so if there's stuff that you normally use, you want to have some of that in your with you. This bag's got my boo boo kit in it, regular everyday first aid band aids, you know, sporin type stuff. Got some super glue. Uh, there's a pair of scissors in here for cutting clothes or cutting the tape or whatever you need to. Um, this, I left it in the box, but I would take it out of the box. I left it in the box just to help show what it is. It's a, this is a mask. Uh, this is, I think, made for if you're around people who are ill and have some contagious disease, but you could also use it as a dust mask if you needed to. But if you're in a group setting, you might be in, a, in an area where there's a sick person nearby and, and you don't want to get sick. That's the boo-boo kit. The other part of the first aid, my first aid kit is is my uh, blowout kit or trauma kit. And in this bag is a, a couple of dressings. One's a, uh, a six inch Israeli dressing. In. One is the other, and I got a regular little uh, old fashioned military style old school surplus uh, dressing. I've got a cat tourniquet. It's a, uh, it's a very effective and fairly easy to apply tourniquet. Then I've got a, a pouch of uh, quick clot gauze, and it's an anticoagulant embedded into the gauze. And if you had a big open wound that was that was pumping blood out, you could basically what you do is stuff it in there, and it it absorbs the blood and makes it clot faster. That's for major incidents. That's not for boo boos. All right, we're gonna start on some, uh, let's go to the shelter. I got a sleeping bag. This, mm, this one's rated, uh, the comfort it says 41 and extreme is 23. Scott, tell a little bit about the compression bag. That's very interesting to me. Uh, well, most of the modern sleeping bags are gonna come with a stuff sack that's, uh, it's a compression stuff sack, so it helps you push all the air out and make a more compact package. Um, so with this bag, um, everybody's different in a sleeping bag about their comfort level, right? It may be a little exaggeration about the comfort level with this bag, but you won't die. It's gonna have to be pretty bad, like subarctic, before you die of exposure if you're inside this bag, especially with the other components of the, of the shelter system. Um, 
If you're not warm enough, you can always put on some of them layers, the clothing layers that I'm about to cover. Okay, this, ha this is a sleeping pad. This happens to be a self-inflating army surplus one. Uh, your choice on what kind of uh, pad you want. They have closed, so closed foam pads like Insulite um, or self-inflating ones or air mattresses. Uh, it gets you off the ground a little bit, a little bit of comfort in this small one. It doesn't get that. It's about three quarter of an inch or inch thick when you fill it with air, and it gives you some insulation if the ground is cold. Next is, uh, this is a bivy bag. This one happens to be uh, breathable. It's kind of like Gore-Tex. Uh, it doesn't keep all the moisture from your body trapped inside of it, because if, 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 if you have the moisture trapped inside of that thing, your sleeping bag's gonna get soaking wet just from the, from the uh, moisture that you emit when you breathe and it, that comes out of your pores. So this, you can, you can get your sleeping bag in there and you could basically lay on the ground and it, in the rain and you should stay reasonably dry. This is, this is touted as being waterproof and breathable. So this pouch has, has a tarp in it. This one is, 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 uh, is made out of ripstop nylon and treated with a waterproof material. The brand of this one is AquaQuest. Uh, it's pretty lightweight. You do not want to get it near fire. Like any thin nylon, it's either will, it could burn or melt or at least get a hole burn in it by embers. So I've got a few small bungee cords to help me build a shelter with my tarp. I uh, picked up the stake, well the bungee cords, this pack of bungee cords was a dollar at the dollar store, Dollar General. Uh, I picked up these stakes at Walmart. These are a dollar each for these aluminum stakes and they're pretty sturdy. And then I have my tarp. And I have some more cordage to, to, build, to build my shelter. Uh, I'm not gonna unroll the tarp. This is a eight by 10 tarp. You don't, you're, you don't have to have quite that big of a tarp, but if you have a tarp that's bigger, it's like an eight by 10 tarp for one person, you have more room under your shelter. You could bring your gear under there. If you had to, if you were in the woods and you needed to have dry firewood or keep wood dry, you might be able to put some firewood underneath there. This is actually big enough for to make a easily make a two person uh, shelter with this. Oh, that's the shelter. Then I have rain gear. This is some lightweight. I think I got it from Cabela's, but it's it's thin and light. Don't does not have to be leaf camouflage stuff. That's what I bought because it was, it was on sale. And I can use it for hunting. Okay, I've got some leather work gloves. Um, you can wear them when you're, if you're bushwhacking, going through the woods. Uh, you, again, if you fall or grab onto something sharp or a sharp stick, this protects your hands. If you're doing work, uh, Hauling stuff, you might want to do that because if your hands get injured or get an infection, that's a, that's a bad thing. Uh, this is a, in the Army, we call it a boonie cap. Some people call them a bucket cap. It does not have to be camouflaged. That's just what I have. It keeps the sun off your uh, neck cause, and your face. Like a ball cap will not take care of your neck, but this will take care of your neck. I have a... Uh, fleece, beanie, or watch cap to keep my head warm. And that's one of the things, this comes in handy, <coughs> excuse me, when you're in your sleeping bag and maybe you don't have your head, you don't want your head stuffed down in there or, or you're too tall to fit in there with your head all the way inside, but putting this on helps keep the heat in. It makes you feel warmer in the sleeping bag. This is a, this is like an optional thing. This is a, this is a polypropylene neck over. You use it like a scarf. You can wear it like a hat, pull it up over your face. You don't want anybody to know who you are. So this is a handkerchief. You don't need a camouflage one. The handkerchief can be used for many things. Uh, bandana, whatever you want to call it. 
Obviously, you can use it to uh, blow your nose because it's original design. You can use it like a dust mask. You can use it for first aid purposes. Um, you could use it to help pre-filter your water if you're if you're getting water out of the creek or whatever, and you're putting it in your water bottle. Uh, uh, you can pour the water through the handkerchief and catch a lot of the big particles, you know, w dirt or twigs or whatever is floating around in there. So it makes your filter work better because it's not getting clogged up. Um, on the list, there's a fleece jacket or a, or a hoodie. Um, this is just a cheap military surplus one. Uh, it's a layer. You want to have multiple, be able to multiple layer for the conditions. This is, I call it a puffy jacket. This one's a down jacket. Uh, like the sleeping bag, you know, it's got insulation value. Uh, whether it's if it's especially if it's down you want to keep it dry if it's raining You want to have your rain jacket on over this if it's if it's that's too hot just wear the rain jacket uh, So uh, down or primal off to the two uh, Predominant insulation in the puffy jacket so primal loft is usually more expensive uh, however, it's not as Affected by water if it gets wet it, it retains some Insulative value if you have a down jacket and it gets wet it does not and I have sprayed this one with some uh, like scotch guard or some other water Water repellent spray to help water from soaking into it if it does get wet <coughs> of course if you have your uh, Clothing and stuff you're trying to keep you warm and dry you want to make sure it doesn't get wet so keep it in some sort of waterproof the, the pack has also been sprayed with that Scotch Guard or other Camp Dry or whatever brand that you want to use, but that's not waterproof. That's water repellent. So, but it, having it in a in a plastic bag will help make sure you have some dry to wear. And this is my clothing: uh, long sleeve shirt, long pants. So I have some thermal underwear, you know, top and bottom in here. I have I have uh, three pairs of socks, two changes of underwear, complete, you know. Uh, the theory would be that while well, one pair, one, your one set of clothing that you leave the house in is drying or you're washing it, whatever, you have the other set to wear. Uh, uh, the underwear, the socks, they they're need to be changed more frequently than the outer, outer clothing would be. Again, keeping it in some type of waterproof container or bag. So on the clothing items, you want to try to stay away from cotton. You want to try to focus on synthetics or wool because cotton, if you're in an environment where you're wet and it's cold or cool weather, the cotton is going to uh, rapidly, more cool you more rapidly and has zero insulative value once it's wet. Uh, cotton's more durable, it's usually cheaper. Uh, if you, a lot of, some of the, uh, uh, you can maybe find some tougher pants or whatever, you know, heavier duty pants that are a blend of nylon and cotton. Uh, shirts, the, I have the flannel shirt, that's a, that's a polyester flannel, it's not a cotton flannel that I got from Cabela's. Um, so again, cotton's fine in the summer when it's hot. Uh, if, you, if you get wet, you want to cool off, and you, it helps you, it helps you be helping you cool off through evaporation. But if you're in a, in a, you know, we don't have much summer here in this area, so most of the time you're, you're going to be more worried about staying warm and dry rather than staying cool. Um, going back to the shelter, I, I, I missed this. This is a contractor trash bag. Um, I don't know if I got this at Costco or where I got it, but this is a very heavy duty trash bag very thick plastic and as you can see it's quite long and it's a good idea you could have a couple of these in your bag for many purposes I mean, you could make emergency uh, like a raincoat or poncho out of it by, by cutting a hole right here for your head um, if you don't have a baby bag or somebody with you doesn't have a baby bag 
um, a large portion of your sleeping bag could fit in here. And if you had two of them, obviously you would cover a whole sleeping bag. You could, if your gear, if your pack or whatever is, is uh, won't fit under the shelter that you're using, you could, and it's raining, you could put your gear inside this thing, keep it dry while it's sitting outside of the shelter. So they're not very heavy and you you want to, you don't want to get a leaf bag or whatever you need it, the contractor bag cuz of how thick the plastic is um, these can be used for many many things you could do a whole class practically on on things you can do with the plastic bag that, especially one this thick and, and heavy duty so well, i uh, i overlooked this it was i had it earlier attached to my uh, spork so this is a can opener so even if you don't pack canned goods in your evacuation kit, 72 hour kit, bug out bag, bug out kit, whatever you want to call it, even if you don't pack that type of thing, it's a good idea to have a can opener because you don't know when you're going to come across it. If somebody gives you something, you're able to buy canned goods. Um, if you're at a place where there's relief supplies, if this is a big, big long-term deal, uh, if you if you come across or come into possession of canned food without a can opener, you you can do it with a knife, but I have scars and stitches to show that cutting opening things with a knife sometimes doesn't work out so well. Uh, this this is what I call a B52 because of its size. The original ones that I that were issued by the military were smaller. We call them P38s. And I don't know if that's ever been a real designation, and I don't know the story behind why they're called P-38s, but we call these bigger ones B-52s because the B-52 aircraft is much bigger than the World War II P-38 aircraft was, so that's why we call this one a B-52. I think it might be better because it gives you more leverage. You got more to hang on to. <clears throat> anyway, it's not fun to open cans, especially big cans with these, but you can. I've opened number 10 cans of stuff we, we put up at the cannery with this because our regular home one that you turn like this was wimp, too wimpy to open the cans and one of these would do the job. So light and small and something good to have on you. That's it. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. You have, you're gonna have to splice this back in. You, once you assemble this 72 hour kit, you need to leave that stuff in there except when you're inspecting it or rotating the food or whatever out or adding or subtracting because of the weather conditions. You can't use this as your camping stuff. You can't let your kids get into the, their kits to eat the food out of there for snacks or anything like that. They, you need to set this stuff aside as much as possible. If you do borrow out of there, you need to do something to remind you to re put it back in when you get done. Because if something happens and you need to grab this and go out the door, it's too late to go back. To, it might be too late to go back to the house and get that thing that you pulled out for the camping trip or whatever. <laughs>